Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I hope you're well. And just to remind you that my website jasonnewland.com has all of my recordings on there and I know that it's it's probably a lot easier to use the podcast that you're using whether it's Apple Stitcher Spotify whatever but I do have other podcasts that may be useful other recordings uh, that I've been making since 2006 that may also be useful uh, I've got re- a lot of relaxation sessions um, and sleep sessions insomnia I've got a regular podcast I do called Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis where I whisper just very very soft very quiet and they they normally last for about 20 minutes I've done 145 of them I think so far and I've got the let me bore you to sleep ones which is just me rabbit on on about nothing for an hour and there's about 219 of those and there's the sleep hypnosis weekly which I do that lasts a bit longer probably about 40 minutes sometimes an hour and that's once a week as well as other sleep sessions that I've done so out of all the recordings I've made over the years I've got more sleep recordings than anything else so you're never going to run out the benefit that the sleep sessions have is they're all relaxing So you don't necessarily need to uh, only listen to them when you're in bed wanting to go to sleep. You might just decide to take a an hour out of the day, sit down in a chair, lay back, or have a lie down, and just feel relaxed, just enjoy the feeling. So I just thought I'd let you know about that stuff. Now today, what I'm thinking of doing is, I'm pretty sure I've done it before, but it can't really be done enough, because what I want to do is help you to deal with a fear, something that you're scared of, a phobia, um, something that you're anxious about doing based on something that you're anxious because maybe you've you've had anxiety before or it didn't go as well as you want it to or um, it could be a variety it's just infinite amount of possibilities for that so I'm not even going, going to attempt to imagine the different scenarios that could be possible there's probably hundreds just for myself over over the years and most of them most of the things that happen in their lives don't have an effect like a huge effect we almost it's like the wind that just blows over us you know and we just keep walking and forget about it you don't think about what the weather was like yesterday necessarily unless it was some torrential weather but generally the weather's gone it was windy so what it was raining got a bit wet don't matter but then there's occasionally is that weather that is memorable to say the least I had a friend a couple of years ago phoned me up and said 
my roof's just blown off and I don't mean farted I mean it blew off her house and I was actually in my flat enjoying the sound of the wind so it's weird how we have these different I mean she might have been enjoying listening to it as well but not since her roof blew off she now associates the wind in her mind possibly or she could I don't know but she could associate it with that situation that happened that one off event that's unlikely to ever happen to anyone ever in normal circumstances and I say that I realise that some people live in places where they have is it typhoon seasons or hurricane seasons and we don't have that in my country so just bear bear with me with my ignorance for that stuff but we don't it's unlikely to happen here I hope it's unlikely to happen where you are as well and if it did happen it's unlikely to happen twice I hope so in life as in the weather we get through most of the weather and it doesn't affect us maybe it affects us in a moment maybe it affects our day you know you get to work it's soaking wet by the rain when you get to work and you're sitting there for a few hours with wet socks not an enjoyable experience And you can't dry them on the radiator in the office because all the other people complain. But you get through it. It's uncomfortable. You move on. But then there's that time, that weather that does affect. We had a hurricane here in 1987, I think it was. And blew trees down, and it was really it was a big deal because we don't normally have that kind of extreme weather. It affected a lot of people, and I'm always going to remember that day. Um, not traumatically, because it didn't cause me any trauma, but I found it funny because I looked out the window. And the window cleaner was still trying to clean the windows of the supermarket opposite where I lived. And the windows were black with dirt from the wind. Because I lived near the sea. So that all the sand was being blown up. And he was there being blown around still trying to wash the window. That was dirty as soon as he washed it. That tickled me. And... But for other people, it was a really horrible experience. I suppose that's the benefit of staying indoors, isn't it? So with, like the weather, with those experiences, we're affected, don't we? Sometimes more than others. So... There's a thing that can be done. There's a technique. And I don't do a huge amount of techniques, but this isn't my technique. And officially it's called uh, the fast phobia cure, and it's an NLP technique. However, although NLP has taken credit for it, I've seen um, similar techniques in old hypnosis books from, you know, 70 years ago or longer, something similar. And the point of that, the the whole idea of it is, you've got this memory, you've got this emotion attached to this memory. And... It's 
it's about changing the way you see the memory, the way you experience the memory. It doesn't change what happened. You need a time machine for that. There are techniques to help you completely forget what happened and have amnesia for what happened, but I don't do stuff like that. This is about changing how you feel about what happened it, so that you can break that pattern which may be holding you back from enjoying your life in certain circumstances. So it might not be something that affects your whole life. I hope it isn't. However, it might, if something happened in the supermarket, for example, and it could be something, uh, let's say going into a supermarket and the debt, your credit card gets declined. I've had that happen to me and I was very embarrassed. Now for some people, you could brush it off, move on. Other people, it causes trauma, emotional trauma. And I learned years ago, never underestimate how to word this properly but don't underestimate how something can cause emotional pain to somebody try not to so if someone says to you that they're scared of something my advice and I've done this in the past myself and I try not to do it anymore my advice is don't, don't mock them because it might seem trivial to us but it is not to them and what is trivial to them might not be to us when I was a kid I was probably quite horrible you know I'd make fun of people that had phobias and stuff like that but I was a kid I didn't know any better I'm now educated and still make mistakes but very surprised when I was a th you know started out as a counsellor some of the things that you'd if I told you you may even laugh not because you're mocking anyone but just because it like seems so ridiculous that something like that could traumatise someone something so seemingly small seemingly unimportant but to them it wasn't unimportant so and there's the other side of it is actually we've all been the cause of someone else's emotional I don't want to use the word trauma but emotional problems all of us even by not meaning to be but we can't walk around tiptoeing around everybody all the time so you say something to someone you don't know their past you don't know what their triggers are and you might say something as a joke which I have many times and I upset many people over the years and I didn't mean to so I'm very aware of that situation is you don't know what other people's baggage is what other people's emotional issues are 
so that's why I have to be quite vague when I make these recordings apart from when I I do have a podcast self help self development whatever it's called podcast where I focus on specific issues so like nail biting and maybe a phobia and a phobia of balloons and uh, some other stuff but this is like a general anxiety a general uh, something that's stopping you from doing an activity that perhaps you used to do or that you would like to do because it's a shame to allow anything or anybody to get in the way of you being happy because it doesn't matter what you're doing as long as it doesn't hurt another person if you feel happy doing it then go and do it and if something's stopping you from doing it like a memory a tra- you know, traumatic memory or something that's happened in the past and you know, emotionally you're blocked from doing that thing that you know will actually give you happiness and pleasure. Then I think it's worthwhile to make those changes. And I realised that this podcast is about anxiety, stress, panic and things like that. Well, that's what this is. That's, you know, it's not just for people that are going through constant um, trauma and constant stress. It's also for people, regardless of how often they experience this stuff a phobia is someone that's scared of something or scared of doing something whether it's rational or irrational is equal to any panic attack and equal it deserves equal respect I believe that somebody that's you know suffering with constant panic attacks and stress and anxiety uh, depression whatever it may be because although that phobia sometimes you you can avoid it if you got scared of flying just don't fly and you might be able to do everything else in your life so it doesn't really affect your life perhaps and that's not the same as someone that's going through panic attacks constantly and have got agoraphobia and they can't leave the house it's not the same but you stick that person on a plane or in an airport or get them to think about going on a plane the feeling they have will be just as strong guaranteed as any feeling that anyone could ever have as far as panic goes and anxiety and stress so it is worthy of respect I think um, to acknowledge that actually although it may be avoidable a lot of things are avoidable and like I said avoidable then avoidable I mean ultimately agoraphobia is if you turn it on its head that is avoiding everything it's almost like if you avoid everything therefore you can't be stressed or have any anxiety or panic But that's not a 
that's not the kind of life that most people would enjoy having. And the way I see it is, if you like being on your own, and you like being at home, and you don't want to be at going out because that's not what you want to do, brilliant, good on you. That's the category that I sit in. I prefer being at home than going out. But if you're staying inside because of physically not being able to walk out of the door because of the intensity of the emotional trauma that's going on, the panic, the stress, anxiety, then that is not freedom. Freedom is choice. Freedom is choosing. So in a way, a phobia, depending on what it is, does still offer freedom most of the time, depending on what the phobia is. Being phobic of flying, you're free, you're free. you don't have to go to flying. If you've got phobia of going on boats, you don't have to go on a boat. But then what happens if you're in a relationship with someone who really wants to go on a cruise, who really wants to go to the other side of the world on a plane. Not being able to do that or refusing to do it can cause problems, big problems. I know people that have actually had to marital issues because of it so in my mind part of my kind of plan with what I do with these recordings this free service is to try and minimise or reduce or get rid of as many limiting beliefs as possible to free free up your mind and my mind free it up make it a bit looser a bit less constricted a bit less limited and that also goes together with feeling more relaxed not being superstitious that kind of stuff it's very limiting and it's something that we've been taught not something we were born we weren't born with these beliefs in fact we weren't born with pretty much any beliefs it's taught you could take a baby and teach that baby pretty much anything you could teach a child to believe absolutely anything anything and I think that shows in society but we can also teach ourselves that brain that learns those beliefs can also learn new stuff Sometimes it's nice to maybe loosen it up a little bit and get rid of some of those limiting beliefs, some of those things that we've been taught, you know. Perhaps when you were a child, when you were younger, you were told things. You were told that you weren't able to do stuff. You know, you're never going to be able to do that or you're never going to be, you know, the best painter or you're never going to be able to whatever it is people put in their limitations onto you and then you've been taken and I I did as well I took those ideas and beliefs on believing that it was true but it wasn't all true
because it was just opinion and opinions aren't facts big difference and also I think what we are able to do now isn't necessarily what we're able to do in five years time I can't play the piano but I guarantee I could in five years time if I started learning today if I really put my mind to it I could learn to play the piano but I can't play it now that's a fact so someone could say you can't play the piano and I say you're right but if they say you're never going to be able to play the piano they're wrong I remember when I was a kid seeing someone playing the piano with their toes because they had no arms. I mean, that, that's inspirational. And I wonder, how did that conversation go? Dad, Mum, I'd like a piano for Christmas. They must have thought, what on earth? But somewhere, I imagine the parents, this, this man's parents, must have been supportive. Because if that had been, a lot of parents would have just laughed it off. No, you can't play the piano, you've got no arms. So if someone without arms can play the piano, someone that hasn't learned to play the piano, who has arms, can learn to do it. So that's where I go with the beliefs. And it changes. And what we think about ourselves changes to what we used to think about yourself. It changes. And I'm not sure how much attention you pay to that change that's always happening. Because sometimes it's useful to revisit old beliefs. It might be useful to visit or revisit old memories that used to cause stress that maybe used to be what you contributed you know to a trigger to an emotional response maybe it doesn't anymore maybe it's changed maybe you don't know why it's changed but maybe it's changed and kind of doesn't matter why it's useful information if you decide well that's changed I want to use that same technique or that same process that same recipe on something else another thing maybe stage fright uh, you know public speaking maybe asking someone out that you like or simply putting your right foot through the front door outwards and then your left foot in front of that and walking out of your home or going into a public place going into the supermarket and buying your food sitting on a bus feeling relaxed and calm wondering how, why has it changed how come things change so quickly and I'll give you an example actually recently there was um, what was it yeah, there was 
something I heard music I went I was outside and it sounded really loud and this was about 12 o'clock at night and it sounded like it was coming from over the fence like in the other garden near where I live and I was like thinking oh how inconsiderate and just just being a general grumpy old man really and I had in my mind oh they're not that they were doing it to annoy me personally but just because I like to make recordings at night and I, I knew I thought if this goes on all night I'm not going to be able to make any recordings and so I just uh, my friend knocked on my door said do you want to go for a walk I'll take the dog dog for a walk and I'll take Andre for a walk and we did and uh, he said can you hear that music I said yeah I know it's it's the neighbours he said no it's not I said yeah it is he said no it's coming from the pub which is all the way probably about 10-15 minute walk away I said what he said yeah it's coming from the from the pub I said no but we walked and it was walked around it sounded like it was coming from there that's a boring story I admit but my emotions changed my feelings changed and they weren't strong feelings so I wasn't I was hardly like punching the wall you know I wasn't jumping up and down going red I wasn't writing an angry letter to the council instantly disappeared instantly that feeling just vanished so things can change so quickly it's almost I've seen people argue in the past where like a couple like a man and a woman or but they're just thinking of a, a particular time but I've seen it a few times where they're really really arguing and saying horrible stuff to each other but at one point one of them says something that makes the other one laugh and it's really interesting to watch that because they're both angry they're both trying to think of saying the worst things they can say trying to think what can I bring up as you know as ammunition and then they get caught off guard and they laugh like naturally laugh because they get tickled by something just like And to watch that person laughing and then trying to push the laughter away. Trying to get that feeling back that they had before. That sh You know? And I could see that struggle. I could see, you know, it's like almost like all the armour had fallen off. And... Who are trying to put the armour back on again trying to and get all you know I want to I've got to feel that way again I've got to get it back so emotions can change in a second and sometimes things need a lot of energy to hold on to them to keep them going things like anxiety panic And sometimes just listening to someone like me rabbiting on. And I know it does seem like I just talk and talk and talk and I kind of do. But it's about how you feel. It's about how you feel differently 
during and after you've listened to me. That's that's the tester. That's that is it. That is the point. That is where you can actually cut through cut through that stuff that that crap that you don't need it's almost like turning the extractor fan on in the kitchen after you've burnt some sausages or something you know or whatever toast and you can just see the smoke moving and clearing so you can see the kitchen clearly again and anxiety seems to be smoke fog kind of blocks what's actually there almost like the darkness If you're in a room and the light's on and you turn the light off, it feels different. And eventually your eyes become acclimatized to the darkness and you know, you might can't see everything clearly, but you can generally maybe see the bit of light coming in through the window, perhaps there's a street light outside. And you get an idea where everything is, you know. But initially, it's very, very dark and you can't see anything. It feels different. And that's almost anxiety and stress can feel. But instead of worrying about it, instead, of, when you know, because you know that that darkness is going to suddenly become lighter your eyes acclimatize you have trust in that safety that you know you have you know where you are you know that you're lying on your bed or wherever you are and it's fine and there's something about that fog that smoke just disappearing, allowing you to see clearly through that thing that was causing, whether it's a phobia or whatever it is, anything that gets in the way of your happiness doesn't deserve to be in your mind, really. Or anything that causes you unhappiness or stress anxiety doesn't deserve to be in your mind or your life those feelings don't deserve to be there you don't have to allow them to be there this is your mind it's, it's your hotel you decide what guests you have in your hotel there's a guest you don't like you don't have them especially if they, if they misbehave or make a mess of the place or they don't pay their bill you kick them out and you don't allow them to come back and every guest has to leave at some point it's a hotel they don't stay forever some stay longer than others some, some overstay their welcome but those that overstay their welcome don't get to come back so when you've got that emotion it's a phobia, stress, anxiety whatever, whatever that thing is that memory, that thought, that trigger it's there at the moment maybe but it has to leave because it's just visiting it's just a visitor in your mind, the hotel of your mind. It's just renting a room for a short period of time. 
and it has to move out. It's a temporary visitor. And when it leaves, you lock that door, you don't let it back. If it tries to get in, say, sorry, we're full. Hotel's full. We only have nice thoughts here now. We only have thoughts to expand your ability to believe in yourself and to trust in your own ability to make those decisions that will increase your positivity and your sense of calmness and relaxation that's naturally within you that comes with that confidence of knowing that you have so many qualities that allows you to make changes and allows you to enjoy your life qualities that other people like qualities that you can maybe learn to appreciate things and abilities that maybe have been almost stunted and held back due to false beliefs beliefs that other people have embedded into your brain at an early age maybe telling you that or if you know you felt that you weren't able to do stuff or you weren't able to to do the thing that you want to do that makes you happy that you are somehow less than what you could be but now as you think forward you realise that actually you are able to take back that control and decide what beliefs you have what confidence you can have in yourself what things that you can now realise that you are able to do to improve your life to improve your well-being physically emotionally and mentally able to make changes so you feel more relaxed You're able to experience all emotions without being attached to any emotions, knowing that all feelings pass. Every single feeling passes. It comes and then it leaves. Just like those visitors at the hotel, they come and they leave. But as they leave, you can start being maybe a bit more, a bit more fussy about the clientele that you have staying in your hotel. So those feelings can be things like anger. You don't want anger there. Don't want any angry, angry visitors. No, don't want them in the hotel. Don't want any anxiety now. No, don't want any more of that. You can go somewhere else. Have some confidence, please. Confidence can stay. 
relaxation can stay in the hotel. Calmness, positivity, love, self-love, self-belief. choice, the ability to choose what you believe and how you feel and how you live your life. So I'm just going to quickly do this fast phobia cure for those that are interested. Now, this, if there's a particular thing, um, and I'll let you, you could do it in your own time, but the basic, the whole, what it is, is you think about the thing, the person thinks about the thing that they're phobic about. They imagine watching it on a screen, like a cinema, in black and white. So you drain the color out. And you can just go to the beginning of the event that may have uh, caused that phobia or whatever and skip through it and then go backwards. And you can just fast forward and rewind, fast forward, rewind, add music. And you can distort it, you can change it. You can add a little cartoon character running around for no reason. there's lots of different ways there are millions of ways that you can make changes and sometimes just listening to someone like me talking and even though it may not seem like much it's about how you feel not just during, but afterwards. And not just immediately afterwards, feeling relaxed and calm and positive and noticing those changes, but it's also later on, in a few hours' time, tomorrow, the next day, the day after, noticing how things have changed, what's happened, why has it changed, I didn't do anything, I didn't... Well, you have done something. You just spent the last 48 minutes listening to me. You could have spent that time doing something else. Probably more enjoyable, possibly. However, keep listening. The changes happen. Because those changes, they want to happen. Your body and your mind wants to feel relaxed and calm. It wants to feel that release. It's basically young. Yeah, carrying around this big heavy bag and your body doesn't want that anymore doesn't want it and it's almost like your body doesn't know why you're still holding it and your mind doesn't really know why you're still holding it it's almost like you've forgotten why you were holding it to start with now it's affected your body it's affected your mind and all you need to do is let it go drop it to the floor and keep walking and never look back So I'm going to go, that's the end of this here recording, I shall be back again possibly tomorrow 
um, I try and do these regularly and I hope that they're useful beneficial uh, if that is the case then please let me know but go to my website and just let me know how you feel how you're getting on and I will speak to you very very soon so remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy Lots of love. Bye.